<laughs> Hello, Mr. Red here. Today is March 27, 2020. I'm in the back of the Abbey, underneath that little lean-to hut that, that we had built back there to house our beehives, some of our beehives. And today, you could probably well imagine I'm doing splits. With the, the threat of the coronavirus so rampant, particularly in the New Orleans area, and you know, we're only 40 miles from New Orleans, um, we're basically not quarantined, but we're restricted to stay on campus. I'm, I'm actually staying here at the Abbey right now. So all my activities have to be done right here on the Abbey. But since I'm doing all this stuff by myself, I certainly can split these by myself. And it's like way, like I'm on right on the edge before all these hives start swarming on me. And so what I'm doing today is going through all of them. I've been working um, hives now for splits for four weeks now. And even before I get into all this stuff, I want to preface what I'm telling you, what I'm going to say, and that I'm just offering ideas of way to do, do a split. Because as I'm doing these splits, I don't do them just one way. I'm, I, I probably do it three or four different ways when I'm going through here doing splits. I don't, I don't stick to one method. Whatever situation the high presents to me, that's the way I'm going to split it. At this point, at this point, these hives, the, the swarm cells, the superseding cells, they're about ready to emerge. I mean, like, probably this afternoon, tomorrow, the next day. And, and which is, to me, a great, a great time if I can catch them in time. I've already caught three swarms from back here as they were hanging on the box, and, and I, I managed to, to split them. But it's just like touch and go with what I'm doing. So what I'll be doing today is I'll be going through some of these boxes. Hopefully I'll get some uh, good video that you might be able to use to get ideas on how you could do splits. But basically how I'm going to be doing these splits is I'll go through the box. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top box, which 90% of the time I've got a queen in, in this top box. Why she's in there, I don't know, but she generally is. I'm going to take that top box and I'm going to move it off of this stand. And the reason I want to move the, the, the queen off the stand, it lessens the likelihood of her swarming. All, when I move this box, all the field bees that are in this box, they're going to come right back to this spot. And what I, want, what I don't want to do is give the queen ammunition or more bees because that's just going to encourage her to swarm again. So if I take away her bees, there's lessen the likelihood of her swarming. And not to say that she won't, but it does decrease the likelihood of it. So I move her off the stand. And now what I'm going to do, once I move her off the stand, then I'll go through frame by frame in this box and this box, both boxes. And I'm, one, looking for the queen cell, looking for the queen, looking for queen cells, whether they be swarm cells or superseding cells. If I find the queen, that's great because I want to move her off and she'll be off to someplace else. And then I'll try to not give her that many bees because I don't want her to swarm. And then as I go through the frames and getting the superseding cells or the swarm cells, I will then drop those frames either into the, to the bottom box if I, because the queen's not in there. Or if I don't find the queen, I'll leave some in there uh, and it'll work out whichever way. Hopefully I'll find the queen, but I mean, I haven't found her a lot of times. There's just so many bees in here. So I know that's a lot of information to present right away. Maybe the best thing to do is just to go ahead and, and do the splits. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around. In fact, I'm going to show you of what the area that I'm working in right here and show you the activity of our hives. We had so many hives back here that I actually had to sell hives this year. I've never sold hives before. So I sold nine of them back here. Took one because I needed the equipment. Not that I needed the space because I got plenty of space, but I, I needed the equipment. And so I had to get rid of them. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I want to show you what we're looking at right now. And these are the two little lean-to huts that we had constructed to put our hives under. And again, just another experiment, because I've always found that bees do better if they're undercover. And it's true. In fact, I would say that 70% of our honey came from these boxes back here. They're seldom tampered with. I probably visit them every three months. I don't, I don't come back here and look because they're on their own. 
So we got, this is what we're looking at. And these other stands out here, I've already done some splits. You can see they're over there already. Those are all my old queen splits over there. And those, there's a swarm box, two swarms that I caught over there. They're over there as well. So I want to show you just a, the activity on our bee boxes. I mean, this is just incredible how fast these bees have grown in the last two weeks. Just incredible. And all of these, I mean, I'm, I'm confident that every one of these hives has got swarm cells in it, superseding cells in it, and we're just days away from our queen flying off with the bees. And when the queen flies off with the swarm, the old queen flies off the swarm, there goes my honey. So I'd rather keep my old queen and my honey. We'll go over to the other side, look at those bees. Every time I come back here, I have to wear my suit because these guys, they're not used to people, I don't think. So, I mean, look at this. When you see this number of bees, now this one doesn't have a lot of activity. And look at that, even I've marked it that there's not enough bees in here to split. So this hive, it won't probably be split. But then I found last year, these hives that I didn't split, they still were able to grow enough. And I did pull honey off of these hives, even though I never split them. So, I mean, look at this. This, this is what you want to find when you're looking at your bees. Oh, this is a, another swarm I caught. <laughs> That's why it's only one box. Hopefully by the end of today, I'll get all these boxes split. All right, let's go ahead and do one. Now, I, I, as I said earlier, I've been doing splits on these hives for four weeks now. So some of these are already done. And my, my writing's already wearing off on this one. But on this box right, right here, I've, I've had queen cells. I put queen cells in this one, superseding cells. This one, this one is, is ready to be split. It's ready for a double bore. So this one, this one is gonna get split for sure. This was a, an old queen in this box. Split's already done. Um, this one was queen cell. So these two boxes right here, they, they're side by side. They, they came from each other. This one right here, ready for split. So this one's ready for a split, so we're going to work on this one right now. This one, these corner ones are kind of difficult. I don't have a lot of maneuvering room in here. And this one is full of bees. I'm telling you, it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be a lot of craziness once I open this lid. So right away, when I open the lid and the whole inner cover is covered with bees. So this is going to tell me that I'm going to need to put some smoke on these girls when I open this thing up. And I know we're going to have cells in this one. This box probably weighs, I don't know, 60, 70 pounds. All right, I'm going to take this box and I'm going to now move it to my stand over there. Go and work that box over there. So my box is now set up on a, on a new screen bottom board and now I'm going to go through each one of these frames looking for the old queen as well as looking for cells. And I really, like I said, I just really want to know where my old queen is because I'd rather move her off. If I don't, look at the bees, if I don't find the queen I'm going to make sure I have cells in both my boxes. And one of the, one of the I don't know, signs that I, I, I use to 
give me an indication of, of which box that the bees, the queen is in, is just the, the temperament of the bees. If you notice, these bees are just like super calm right now. The bees over there are like super crazy. So I'm already thinking my queen is in this box because these bees have that assurance that mom's in the box. But still, I'm going to go through frame by frame looking for her. So we're going to begin. Hopefully I won't even have to smoke these guys because I don't think I have to. But those other ones, whoo, we're going to have to smoke them. That first frame is always the tough one to get out. And I, I use my hive tool and pull out the frame that has the least amount of bees and the most amount of space on, on the other side. So as I pull the frame out, here we are, March 27th. Look at the nectar. This frame is full of nectar. And this is newly capped honey right in here. So this is, you really would expect to see this on your outside frames. So there's nothing unusual about that other than the amount of nectar that's already on there. Second frame, same thing. Some capped honey is probably from last year because of the color of it, but the rest is full of nectar. The same on the back side. Beautiful. And all that's necessary when these hives start building these brood. They gotta feed it. Third frame, identical. Alright, I'm already moving into the brood right here. This is older brood. It's some younger brood as well, but it's it's starting to darken out, so it's not real recent. But on this side, it's kind of new. I'm looking for my queen, and I'm looking for cells. And there's that first sweat cell right there. It's uh, it's not capped, but there's a larva in it. There's another one. That's a superseding cell. It's on the face. It's it's not capped. So on this one, we've got four cells that have larva in them, but they're not capped yet. But that's just on this one frame. And we got some more cells on the bottom right here. That's great. Now I know I can split them between the two hives. So I went through the box. I didn't see the queen. But I knew I, I know I have two frames that have cells on them. So what I'm going to do now, bring my smoker we're going to go through that hive back there, see if we can find either cells or our queen in that box. I know she's in here, just the way these bees are acting. So when I moved that box over there, all the field bees that were in that box, they're coming right back here. And that's what all these bees are right here. These are all the field bees that were in that box. They're coming back to, the, to what their GPS's are set for. So I'm going to spray a little smoke on these guys, move them out a little bit. I'm going to go through these frames as well.
Starbucks. I didn't see her. All right. I didn't see her again. And it's really, with all these bees, yeah, it's not really un unusual that you don't find her. But I'm going to base my decision on the, the queen still being in that box on the temperament of the bees. These bees are just plain mean. <laughs> you probably can't even see me because all the bees are crawling around the camera. So I'm going to grab one of those frames that had the cells over there, and I'm going to drop it in this box right here. Add another super to it and close this one up. So here's the frame I'm going to go ahead and use. You got a superseding cell right here, swarm cell. It doesn't matter. If there's no queen in there. She'll come out. Whichever one comes out, look, there's even some on the back side. And there'll be only one queen in that. So we'll drop this frame in there. And then I've got another frame over there that's still got uh, another swarm cells on it or superseding on that too. So we're going to drop this frame in our box right now. their queen in it to be. So these were these were all my honey supers from last year. And they all got drawn out comb on them. So this way I rotate my comb and the bees get nice comb to build in. Once I put this box on it, they'll run up in there, we'll have a little bit more room for the bees, and they'll settle down. thing I'm going to do is mark on it. Queen cells. And the date. Alright, let's go ahead and finish that one up over there as well. So as much as I'd like to have positive visual confirmation that my queen is in the box, I'm still going to assume by the, the behavior of the bees she's in this box. So we're going to go ahead and get our frames all straightened up right here. But we're going to drop in these cells that already have larvae in them. They're not capped, but they're queen cells and let them finish working on those. Either way, we're going to have a queen in this hive, a new queen in this hive. we got a a cell right here too. So we have, and this one's a cap. One.
think I'll leave the cover off. And they're climbing up the back right now. They'll work their way up in there. All right, I think that's about it. I got plenty more to do. This video is slowing me down. Let me get try to do some more splits this afternoon. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching. I'll be making more. God bless, Mr. Red. Me and these bees, we still got a lot of wrangling to do together. So I got to get busy. God bless.